Hello, uh, I'm Shreyas. Uh, I'm from Louisiana State University and I interned uh, last summer in NVIDIA uh, at CCCL. Can anyone guess? It's not Whatever one. it is, it's, it's not, not one. one. <laughs> okay. It could be one, it depends. But what's the answer now? Zero. Okay, so uh, it really depends on the order and uh, obviously what kind of data type you're going to use. Uh, turns out compilers do this kind of stuff. And if you try to see how many times floating point summation is non-associative, it turns out to be that. It's 26.3% <laughs> non <laughs> Uh, so what's Cub? Cub is CUDA Unbound. Uh, it's a library which provides um, several primitives uh, to program GPUs, and it claims that it provides uh, out of the bo box uh, speed of light performance. And reduction today works like this. Uh, so on Ampere, uh, you'll be having different tile configurations. On Hopper, you'll be having different tile configurations. And obviously, as we saw before, that the order matters when you use floating point summation reductions. So the results, the out is going to be different in both of these cases. But CUB does provide run-to-run uh, -run determinism, which means if you run on same GPU with same configuration, it's going to be, uh, the result's going to be the same. So if at all we want bitwise reproducible results, what do we do? Uh, some people might say, Kahan summation. But that's not really deterministic. It's just uh, better precision. Uh, the other solution could be storing the deterministic order, but that's really not feasible. So we try a new algorithm. Um, suppose we define a floating point number in such a way, 8-bit, uh, which is really small. Um, I have three numbers. I have an accumulator, and I divide that accumulator into three <coughs> bins which will store my float. Uh, for now, don't uh, focus on the order of the addition. Uh, I mean, the, uh, the order in which the numbers are stored in the bins. Uh, so as you can see, um, I've got the three numbers in the bins, and they are actually arranged according to their exponents. And I did lose a bit of precision there, but I got some result. And uh, if you can guess here, the idea is to slice the number, number into their exponents and store that uh, number depending upon its exponents into the bins. This is what uh, Willow, Arends, and all the others uh, proposed in their new algorithm in this paper. And the basic idea is that the slices uh, within each bin is independent of the order in which whichever they are <coughs> summed. So ideally, to have the best precision possible, you'll have infinite bins, but uh, three is enough for this purpose. Kate Clark presented a uh, demonstration of this algorithm in her talk. Uh, this is the uh, error comparison. Uh, in simple terms, it means that it's 3.5 times worse than Kahan and uh, four times better than pairwise. So how much is the over overhead uh, you get when you use this kind of an algorithm? Uh, in cups, we consider reduce uh, to be speed of light. So we normalized uh, all the algorithms according to that. And uh, if you can see, we got around 2% uh, overhead on A6000 and 20% on H100. And uh, reproducible summation is uh, on its way to speed of light and into cup. Bonus, uh, while doing this, we did see that we have several checks in place uh, to check if the inputs aligned or not, and then if it's first style, last style. And all this led to uh, six times duplication. For large kernel sizes, we saw uh, terrible iCache misses. And this reproducible uh, floating point accumulator is used to be, uh, needs to be used in a certain way. For example, if you uh, run out of precision in the bins, you have to renormalize the whole bins, which takes additional uh, time. And uh, it really depends on how you use the floating point accumulator uh, for achieving speed of light. Thank you.